hope you're all well just want to say a big thank you for all of those that have subscribed to my channel so far if you like what I'm doing then please tell your friends and please give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing every comment helps me so thank you very much so last couple of days I've been thinking about doing a kind of homage video to one of my favorite Nintendo consoles now this t-shirt may be somewhat confusing as there is a Super Nintendo controller on there but the colour of the t-shirt is more important. Yes, as you've probably already worked out, and me giving this introduction isn't probably as needy, but I like to do it anyway, I'm gonna be doing a homage video to the Nintendo GameCube. Looking back now, it was probably one of the best consoles that Nintendo put out there in relation to keeping up with the other consoles. Um, graphically, it was a beautiful powerhouse of a console and uh, I would say it was up there with the Super Nintendo for games as well. Now I love every Nintendo console but there was just something about the Nintendo GameCube that was fantastic. And when I was making this homage video, um, I started to remember not only the good times but just how many great titles that were on the system. Now just a few warnings, um, I did have some issues with my recording equipment uh, when it came to 60 hertz output. I don't know if any of you can help me with this, um, I have a smart TV and when I was playing games that were only in 60 hertz, uh, some of the display uh, was messed up. My TV is fine, my recording equipment is fine, I want to still put them on the videos uh, so that you know I can still talk about these games. So without further ado, I'm going to get on with my homage video to the Nintendo GameCube and please let me know what you think. Thank you very much and thank you very much for all of the support, Nintendo GBR. Well now, make homage to the Nintendo GameCube. So yes, Nintendo GBR here, and we are gonna kick off with, yes, you've got it, Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube. And what a strange, unusual, and beautifully realized game that this was. Um, I was the first in queue when the GameCube launched um, in, I think it was May 2002 in the UK. And um, it was one of the first systems that I can recall that didn't come with a Mario game. And I remember that lots of people in the media were kind of uh, kind of pointing this out. But there was like, you know, I was launching with a Luigi game. So, uh, yeah, there was a little, I suppose, a point of contention there. But I remember kind of seeing early kind of screenshots of Luigi's Mansion, and I was kind of thinking, this could be really good, or it could be really, really bad. So anyway, I remember buying my GameCube from HMV, May 2002. I got the bus up there, went home, and I picked up Luigi's Mansion and uh, Star Wars, I think it was Rogue Squadron. So yeah, Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, um, I thought it was an absolute corker of a game. And I kind of like anything paranormal anyway. But I think, thinking back uh, right to that moment, I remember thinking, wow, this looks absolutely gorgeous. I didn't expect um, the GameCube to have been able to have given out um, or output such beautiful graphics. And I was also kind of taken with the kind of um, the, the, the strange kind of aspect of Luigi um, being a Ghostbuster. Um, obviously, as this game started off, uh, you were kind of in the mansion, kind of looking around, trying to figure out where to go. And uh, here's a classic beginning with the key. And, um, you know, you just start off with a torch and you think, well, I can't jump here. I can't really do anything uh, other than walk around with a torch. So the game kind of gently, gently kind of introduces you to the mansion um, and to the fact that you are alone and that you're scared and I used to love some of the animation uh, in this game the fact that every time um, which I think you'll see in a minute Luigi would go up to a door to open it and here we can see here 
kind of he'd put the key in and you'd see his hand just slightly shaking kind of anticipating what was behind the door and I really liked that it was almost kind of Disney-esque for me and even though you don't get to see the ghosts uh, for a little while in this game um, you um, immediately become aware of how good it looked back then to me it was almost like having uh, a Pixar movie on my GameCube and for me that was absolutely fantastic and here also is a very important character Professor E. Gad this is the first time we've ever seen E. Gad in a game um, if anybody knows any differently then please correct me and um, it's really important that we talk about Professor Gad is because he's the one who gives Luigi his vacuum cleaner so he basically makes Luigi uh, into a Ghostbuster but he also pops up in another game which will be coming up after this so Professor E. Gad uh, in particular uh, became quite an important character in Mario games on the GameCube now we're going to focus here now uh, this is really like the first boss fight that you have it's not really a boss fight but it kind of feels like one when you first get into it that kind of building kind of music uh, was trying to you know terrify you although I was old enough not to be terrified and this was just kind of giving you that first kind of confidence boost um, using the vacuum and um, I, I just love this game I, I, I recently uh, uh, completed this game all over again dug out my GameCube and completed the whole game and it just feels such a solid game the animation was absolutely fantastic and to be honest I don't know why there hasn't been more Luigi Mansions game, uh, games I had Luigi's Mansion 2 on the 3DS, but um, I really do believe they should have brought one out for the Wii U, um, possibly even the Wii, because that kind of control controller kind of setup would have been absolutely fantastic. But yeah, um, I don't know any of you out there if you're a fan of Luigi's Mansion or anything like that. If you are, then please let me know. Uh, this was one of my favourite games ever on the on the Nintendo GameCube. So, moving on, I'm sure you're all familiar with this. It's uh, Super Mario Sunshine. Now, as we were talking about earlier, and Professor E. Gad, uh, he also crops up in Super Mario Sunshine. Now, I've edited some of this uh, beginning just to kind of, uh, we can get straight into it. Um, and there's the uh, Isla Delfina. Now, Super Mario Sunshine, to me, was a very bizarre but a very brave game from Nintendo. They were, again, breaking the norm. First I had Luigi's Mansion, Luigi on his own and, you know, walking around with a hoover, sucking up ghosts. And this time, um, in Super Mario Sunshine, it was Mario going on holiday. Um, if that wasn't strange enough, which, you know, to some people, they're probably fine with it, there was voice acting. The only person that wasn't voice acted was Mario. Um, many of the characters in this had voice actors, uh, and that felt unusual. It was almost as if they were trying to make Mario into more of a normal individual as opposed to a video game character. Remember when I first played it, I wasn't quite kind of taken on the idea, although I know that there's a lot of people uh, that really enjoy Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, once I got into Super Mario Sunshine, I enjoyed it, um, but I don't know if this will be a controversial point. I'd say Super Mario Sunshine is probably my least favourite Mario game. It just didn't have that same excitement that the others bought for me personally. But here we go, um, another um, invention from uh, Gad Science. Um, obviously in Super Mario Sunshine you use the uh, flood um, to kind of spray paint off the wall or to propel yourself upwards or to kind of uh, shoot yourself up like a steam powered rocket but again um, the flood is something that was created by EGAD and uh, I, I, I kind of like that um, there's kind of a professor in Mario's universe that was creating things for him. Uh, I'd like to see him pop up more often and maybe in new Mario games. I can't remember if he was in uh, Super Mario Galaxy. I don't believe he was. But uh, here we go. The first time that we get to see one of the first enemies and how you'll destroy it by using your water. Um, I think there's little nods to Splatoon in uh, Super Mario Sunshine here. Uh, I think maybe Nintendo may have had their first idea uh, of Splatoon. Maybe, who knows? But um, I, I would definitely say there are nods or at least winks to Splatoon. Maybe they was considering something like it for the GameCube, but just hadn't quite got there um, in the development stages. But um, 
Yeah, Super Mario Sunshine, a very strange one for me, but uh, I still love it because it's so quirky and unusual, and it still looks fantastic to this day, I think for a game that's almost 14 years old, but let me know what you think. Is Super Mario Sunshine one of your standout games on the GameCube? Please let me know. Now I had to put this in, it's one of the alternative startup menus, don't know if any of you knew that, but I was just holding down Z uh, on the controller. So. Now we move on to a game that I don't know how many of you have played. Now I completely forgot it was it was made uh, or helped uh, to be made by Rare. Now this is Star Fox Adventures. Now if you haven't played Star Fox Adventures, I really, really, really implore you to go and dig it out and if you, it, from a second hand you know, uh, shop or if you've got it and you haven't got around to playing it, I really implore you to play it because it is still a fantastic game. Uh, whilst I was recording some of the video content for this, I literally found myself just wanting to play the whole thing again. And what I really, really enjoyed about it is that it created a really beautiful universe for you to explore. Now again, you know, these games are kind of, you know, getting on for kind of 15 years old now, maybe, well, uh, 14 years old. But um, as I say, when I was playing through it, I just uh, remember, or I remembered some of the music coming back to me and uh, some of the atmospherics, and I absolutely loved this game. I think when I first got it, I was a little bit unsure about it, and as I got into it more and more, this to me was just as good um, as, uh, let's say, uh, The Wind Waker um, on the GameCube at the time. Um, and what was different about it was that it started off with a character that you were completely unfamiliar with, threw you into a dungeon after kind of defeating this large ship. Again, I have edited this. Um, and you thought, hold on a second, this is Star Fox Adventures, but it was kind of setting it up to be a really, really, uh, I suppose, gentle introduction to this character uh, who you got to play. And then you understood why Star Fox was going to rescue her. Um, now I've included this part um, in, in the video because um, in um, a number of the temples, um, you had to go and find these kind of spirit beings. Um, and you, we all know the kind of um, things that we've done in previous games. You have to collect a number of things in order to kind of bring the planet back to life or uh, to get a, a new character, whatever. And um, this was a little bit different. This one here is kind of like a puzzle element in the game and you had to kind of uh, watch the uh, kind of almost snake charmer kind of box things spinning around the screen and you had to kind of keep your eye on it. But it was just a little bit different from your normal thing in games. And I do remember when I, when I picked this up, I was really hesitant about it because I loved playing Star Fox um, in my kind of teens and I was kind of hesitant that they could make this into a genuine adventure game and as you can see here some of the textures some of the lighting some of the temple design still holds up today um, even that glow um, around the character model right there um, this is quite an old game and it really holds up i for one would absolutely love to see a star fox adventure return on the nintendo switch it's incredibly doubtful because i don't think star fox adventures did particularly well but for me it is one of the games that I would like to see come back and the only reason why I've just uh, put a little bit more of this in here for you is that I just think it's one of those really underappreciated gems that not well maybe not many but a lot of people I don't even think played this game and I'm sure um, just like everybody there's a game that you always want other people to play and for me Star Fox Adventures in some ways made me a lot happier than Super Mario Sunshine. You know, I don't know if that's con controversial or not. Um, but yeah, just looking at uh, this video now and, and just looking at the design of the temples, you can see that a lot of care and a lot of attention has gone into this. And um, I was kind of concerned at first for leaving quite a lengthy video on, <clears throat> excuse me. But um, I just thought there were so many beautiful, uh, I suppose, vistas and scenes and uh, sights in this game that I thought I had to leave it on uh, for you to watch. Now I'm just going to uh, go quiet just for a moment and I'm just going to uh, let you enjoy uh, this part here.
and now we come to the familiar Star Fox that we all you know, loved and knew. And even this was fantastic. Looking at this now compared to the new Star Fox on the Wii U, I would play this one all day long. Apologies for the, uh, the slight, uh, slightly darker uh, video. Um, I'm still having just the odd little issue with my recorder, but um, it does its job quite well here. So in this particular level, you just had to collect one gold ring. It was just kind of gently guiding you in how to, you know, use the Star Wing. And um, I really liked the design of, of uh, Star Fox and um, the ships, uh, particularly in Star Fox Adventures. So now we come to Thorntail Hollow, which is the first kind of planet that you, you get to set down and explore. Uh, this is probably one of the most memorable uh, points for me because it to me just felt like Zelda but Star Fox and it was a difficult game I, think, I, I recall at the beginning but as you kind of figured out how things work it just became an absolute joy to play well for me anyway and I'd really like to know if any other of you found Star Fox Adventures um, to be that game for you just looking at it now I just literally I'm going to go and boot up my GameCube once I'm done talking and uh, I'm gonna go and start playing this again because I just got so much enjoyment out of this game um, that I'm gonna go and get some more enjoyment out of it. So that was the first part of GameCube Memories presented by me, Nintendo GBR. If you like what you've seen then please look out for part two. Thank you very much. <laughs>